Glory, glory, hallelujah. Another beautiful, blessed day today. Just to be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now today just to give it up to him. Just to give him all the thanks right now. Just to give him all the praise right now. Just to give him all the glory right now. I magnify and I shout out his holy name right now. Right now, my brothers, my sisters, I want every last one of you right now today to open up your mouth and give it up to Jesus right now. I want you to thank him like you never thanked him before. I want you to praise him like you never praised him before. I want you to worship like you never worshiped before. I want you to magnify and exalt his holy name like you never done it before. Because at the end of the day, it's all about Jesus and it's always going to stay about Jesus. Because if it weren't for Jesus, we wouldn't be here right now today. So that's why I'm thanking you the way I am. That's why I'm praising you the way I am. That's why I'm glorifying you the way I am. Because I can't thank you enough, Jesus. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for your refuge. Thank you for covering every last one of God through the blood of Jesus. And Father God, right now, we want to give you the thanks right now. We want to give you the praise right now. And we want to give you the glory because you are our everything, Jesus. You are our light. You are our father. You are our best friend. You are our confidant. You are everything, Jesus. So right now, myself, my brothers, my sisters, every young man and every young lady around the world, around the country, around the universe, we are counting on you right now, Jesus. We are depending on you right now, Jesus. Jesus, and we want to say thank you, Jesus. And yet, Father God, we might not see things happening our way. But Father God, we want to let you know one thing that our faith and our trust and our hope is in your hands, God. Father God, you know one thing, we can't do this without you, God. So we need you right now. And Father God, we know that you can move with the right hand. We also know that you can move with the left hand. We know it's nothing too hard for you, Jesus. We know it's nothing too difficult for you, Jesus. So we are crying out our heart to you right now, Jesus, to let you know that we need you right now, this very second, at this very minute, at this very moment. We need you, Jesus. We need you to move on our behalf right now. We need you to act in every area in our life right now today, Jesus. And you know exactly what we're going through, Jesus. So right now, Father God, we put it in your hands. Because your word says, First Peter, chapter 5, verse 7, that we need to cast everything to you because you care for us. Jesus, we tell you, we need you to care for our welfare and our well-being, what we're going through and what we are facing right now. Father God, we don't know, we don't know who else to turn to but you. We can't trust nobody but you, Jesus. We can't count and depend on nobody but you, Jesus. Because we know one thing according to your word, according to your promise, that you never leave us or forsake us, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And we need you right now, God. We don't need you tomorrow. We don't need you next week. We need you right now, Jesus. We need answers right now, Jesus. We need your protection right now, Jesus. We need your love right now today, Jesus. We need your comfort right now today, Jesus. We need your angels to come down to minister us right now today, Jesus. We are dependent on you right now, God. We need you to come through quick. Because your word said we call on you. You said that you will come. And you will come quickly. Father God, we need you to come quick right now. We need you to come right now at this very second, at this very minute, at this very moment, at this very second. We need you to come right now, God. We need you to come right now. Glory to God. We love you, Jesus. You are everything to us. That's why we seek you in your kingdom every day, God. And you know every last one of hard, God. And we love you so much. I said we love you so much, Jesus. We love you. And we trust in Jesus. Glory to God. Have your way with your sons right now. Have your way with your daughters right now. Have your way with your young brother. Have your way with your young sister. Have your way with me right now today, God. Because, Father God, we are crying our heart out to you right now. We are depending on you right now, Jesus. And we are trusting you right now, Jesus. So we are asking in your name to have your way right now, Jesus. Don't you dare ask them. We know that you're going to come correct, God. So we love you. We love you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Glory to God. That's why praise is an everyday thing to us. That's why we praise you the way we do. That's why we glorify you the way we do. That's why we seek in your kingdom the way we do. Because at the end of the day, Jesus, we know there's nobody like you. So we are counting on you. We are depending on you. 
and we rely on you for our answers today. We are counting on you. We are depending on you. And we also rely on you, God, right now for you to come quick in the areas that we are hurting and suffering the most. We say thank you, Jesus, for coming correct. We say thank you, Jesus, for coming correct. And we thank you so much. In the mighty, mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 My brothers, my sisters, I'm so excited right now today just to share another word that came from my Heavenly Father God. And I don't know who this word for right now today, but some of you right now today, you have came too far in your assignment, in your journey, in your mission. And right now, a lot of things is going on right now. The enemy is playing mind games. He's putting sexual thoughts all in your head. He wants you to crack. He wants you to break. But God told me to give you a word right now today. He said, don't focus on that. Right now, Jesus needs you to keep going right now. He said, you have came too far. He said, don't you dare throw in the towel right now. Don't you dare break down right now. Don't you dare give up right now. He said, I need you to keep going. And that's what this sermon is about today. Keep going, my brothers. Keep going, my sisters. Keep going, young man. Keep going, young lady. This word is for you right now today. Amen. Amen. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out to give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father God, I just came thanking you enough for this awesome and beautiful blessed day today. I came thanking you enough for this word right now. I came thanking you enough for this anointing message right now. I just came thanking you, Jesus, for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing right now. I came thanking you for your grace and your mercy. I came thanking you for the food that you have blessed and prepared and put on our table, the clothing shoe that you put on our back. I just came thanking you, Jesus, how you provided. I just came thinking how you making the way out of no way. I came thanking you, Jesus, how you moving mountains on our behalf right now today. I came thanking you for your love. I came thanking you for your angels. I came thanking you for the Holy Spirit. I came thanking you how you covering us. I came thanking you you protecting us. I just came thanking enough, Father God, because you are our Prince of Peace. You're Jehovah Jow. You're Jehovah Shalom. You're Jehovah Nisi. Oh, Heavenly Father God, thank you, Father God. We just can't thank you enough for our blessing right now. We can't thank you for our breakthrough. Thank you, Jesus. We can't thank you for our double portion. We can't thank you for our more than enough. We can't thank you for our overflow. We can't thank you because the storm is already past us right now. We are coming out of the storm this year. We are coming out of this wilderness this year. We are coming out of this dark place this year. We will enter light this year. And I can't thank you enough, Jesus. Glory to God. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify and I worship your holy name the way I do, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put all my heart to you, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough for your glory, God. I thank you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. Glory to God. God say, keep going. Don't you dare stop right now. He said, don't you dare give up right now. Don't you dare even break down. Don't you dare start complaining. Don't you dare start whining. Because the pain that you are going through, the pain that you are facing right now, is the indication right now to let you know that you are closer to your blessing, that you are closer to your breakthrough right now today. That's why you are going through what you are going through. That's why you are dealing with what you are dealing with right now today. That's why the enemy is hitting you hard with everything he can because he already don't peek into your future. He has seen what God is about to bring you into. So that's why you are going through what you are going through. If you take a look back at your life, you take a look back at your situation and you say, look where fire came. So that's why God said, right now, there's no time to be quitting right now. There's no time for you to be stopping right now. Right now, God needs your undivided attention right now. He said, keep going. Because if you only realize how close you are, the enemy will not be attacking you if he was not close. You won't be going through what you were going through if you wasn't that close. Not would you, my brothers. Not would you, my sisters. There's a reason why you are going through what you are going through. You're closer than ever. You're closer to receiving your miracle. 
And God spoke to me so vividly clear this morning. He said, EFT, I have a word that I want you to share with my, with my sons and my daughters and even yourself. I said, God, what's, what's going on? He said, think about what, you, what you're going through right now today. Think about what my, my sons are going through. Think about what my daughters are going through. I said, what is it, God? He said, you came too far. But right now, I need you to keep going right now. Right now, this ain't the time to be worried about anything else. You don't have to worry about who's not clapping for you. I don't want you to worry about who's not rooting for you. Right now, I need you to focus. I need you to keep going right now. I need your undivided attention right now. I will not allow you to go through what you are going through if I didn't have my hands on you. If I was not behind the scenes controlling everything, there's no way that you'd be in this deep water. You have came too far in your assignment. You have came too far in your journal, heavenly God. You have came too far to be looking back now. You have came too far to be complaining. We're going to be reading for two Bible scriptures right now today. We're going to read from Numbers 23, 19, and we're going to finish off at Isaiah 42, verses 14. Right now, we'd love for y'all to turn your Bibles to Numbers 23, and we're going to read verse 19. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Glory to God. Praise his holy name. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. If God promised you something, my, my brothers, my sisters, if God promised you something, that means he's, going, he's a man not to lie to go back on this word. If he started anything in your life, he said he had to finish it. If he's acting on anything in your life, he shall and he will bring the past because he's not going to tell you to do something and say, no, 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 I don't want you to do that. I'm going to give it to somebody else. He's not going to start on anything and say, no, I don't think that was the wrong thing. He's not acting on anything right now if he's not going to bring the past. So right now, whatever God has promised you, whatever it is that God has started in your life, whatever it is that God is acting on right now, he said, keep going. Don't you dare stop. Don't you dare break down. Don't you dare throw in the time right now. I need you to focus right now. I need you to put, I need your undivided attention right now. I need you to put your faith and your trust and hope in me, knowing that I already got it done. It's already complete. It's already finished. Why do you think that the enemy is hating you so bad? Why do you think the enemy is putting all them sexual and naughty thoughts in your head? Because the enemy already know that the job is done. He already know that the assignment is finished. He already know it's complete. He already know that you better walk into your miracle. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He already know that you better walk into your blessing and your breakthrough. The enemy would not be attacking if you wasn't that close. So that's what God is giving me an assured word and a sure message to tell you right now today. You need to keep going right now. He said, don't you focus on that other stuff What's going on right now. He said, I need you to focus right now. Because I'm about to do a new thing into you. I need you to focus. I need you to, to continue to pursue that gift and pursue that dream. He said, because I'm about to bring it to life. I'm about to bring it to pass right now. He said, you have came too far. And you know when you get too far, that's when things start happening. That's when your ship has wrecked. You notice how people don't, people's not around you no more. You start getting distance. Even your husband start tripping. Your wife start tripping. God said, that's okay too. God said, that's okay too. And I know as human beings, first thing we always say, oh, the end is back attacking us again. The devil doing this, the devil doing that. Yes, they might be. Yes, I'm not going to say that the devil is not playing a key role in what he is doing. But one thing you got to know for a fact, my brothers and my sisters, one thing you got to know for sure, the devil might play his role, but God's behind the scene controlling everything. Thing that is going on right now. If you don't believe me, turn your Bible to the book of Job. Job didn't understand nothing was going on. He know why he was going through this because he said, "I didn't do nothing wrong. Why do I deserve this? Why the enemy is messing my health? Why the enemy is messing my finances? Why the enemy have a hedge towards my wife right now?" Because Jesus allowed the devil to play that flute, to play that trombone, to play that tuba 
right now, there right there is an indication that you know that you was chosen and called by God. That lets you know that you were chosen and know for a fact that your blessing, your breakthrough is clear and nearer than what you even can imagine. Right now, I know some of y'all husband right now, I know that you're tripping right now because your wife is not being sexually active towards you no more. And you probably wonder what's going on. You think there's something wrong with you. You think that your wife is cheating. No. Right now, the enemy is using your wife against you because God has allowed that. Right now, God needs you to God needs you to focus. Right now, He don't need you to be worrying about that that, that sex pleasure. Right now, He needs you to focus. Right now, and He needs you to keep going. Don't worry about what your wife is not doing because Job wanted the same thing in Job 19 when he said that my wife said that his breath was offensive. She didn't want to kiss him. She didn't want to make love to him. She didn't have anything to do with him. Look what God did in that. The, God had a, a major role in what the devil was doing towards Job and his wife. God allowed the enemy to do that. Right now, God is allowing the enemy to let the enemy use your wife against you. Right now, God is allowing the enemy to use your husband against you. Because right now, God said, I need your undivided attention. I need you to focus. I don't need you to be worrying about your sexual pleasure right now. That right there will come later. Right now, I need you to hold my hand tight. And I need you to, for you to continue to hold me. I need you for, for you to continue to trust me and to put your faith in me and put your hope in me. Do not worry about that sexual pleasure. And that one thing is our main downfall right now today. We're worried about that. God has a way to cut that off. And right now, that's what exactly what he has done. He has cut our sexual, sexual pleasure off at this very second, at this very moment, because we have came too far. We're getting close. And right now, he needs to keep going. He said, don't worry about that. That's going to be there. Because if I wanted it gone, I'd remove him and her out of your life and put somebody else in there. But I didn't. But right now, I need you to keep going. What do you think he did, Job? He needed Job at that time to keep going because he felt like, that, the, that Job's wife wasn't the right person for him, don't you think that God would remove this wife from Job and bless Job with another wife? But he didn't. But he let he allowed the enemy to be an instrument uh, towards, towards him. So he felt like that his wife didn't love him or he felt like his wife didn't have a sexual act um, sexual acts with him. But God allowed that God had to cut that off from Job because God needed Job to focus. God needed Job to keep going in this assignment in his journey, in his mission, because Job was too close for the turnaround. Job was too close for the blessing. And that's what God is telling me to tell you right now today. He said that you are too close. Jesus is always going to control the temperature. He always going to control behind the curtain. He always going to control behind the scene. Behind the scene. God is in control of everything. He is allowing that. Yes, the enemy going to have a big play in this. He going to have a big role in it. But one thing you got to know for a fact, one thing that you got to know for sure, Jesus is the one who's cheering you on saying, guess what? I'm going to allow him to do that because you already won. I'm going to allow that husband to trip on you because you already won. I'm allowing that wife not to have sexual intercourse or sexual contact with you because you already won. Favors already on your side. Blessings already on your side. Breakthrough and, and anointing double portion. It's already on your side. That is an indication that God has was pruning you the whole time. You was called and you was chosen by Jesus. Come on now. I need somebody to help me preach this word right now. I need somebody to know exactly what I'm talking about right now today. The enemy has been hurting you in a lot of ways. And the armor that the enemy is going to start attacking like that is when you get close. It's when you get close to walk on this shore. When you get close to walk on this sandy beach. When you get close to receive your blessing, your breakthrough. The enemy will not be attacking you the way it's attacking you if you wasn't that close. So that's why Jesus said you need to focus and keep going and keep doing and pursuing your dreams. You don't need to worry about anything else. I need your undivided attention on God right now. Amen. Amen. Please let's turn your Bibles to uh, Isaiah 42. And we're going to read verse 14. If you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. It's Isaiah chapter 42, verse 14. Let's read. For a long time, I have kept silent, 
and have been quiet and held myself back. But now, like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I gasp, and I paint right now. Right now, the, also, the pain that you're going through is the indication that you're about to give birth to something. It is like a woman who is pregnant. The first four and a half months, she don't feel anything. It is her, her pregnancy just as normal. All things she's doing is eating ice, eating junk food, and eating all kind of food. And in, in the beginning, in your assignment, in the beginning, in your mission, in the beginning, in your journey, everything was good. You were happy. You were smiling. You were so joyful. But the last couple months, then when you start hitting bricks, you start hitting bumps, you start hitting stumbling blocks, and you wonder what was what was going on. Then all the, then all of a sudden, in that last trimester, you start realize the pain and the affliction was getting worse. And worse and worse. You probably say, man, why is this pain coming at? Where is this pain coming from? That pain is the indication to let you know that God's about to give birth to your blessing. That God's about to give birth to your breakthrough. Oh, help me, God. God's about to give birth to your double portion, to your deliverance. That's why you are going through what you are going through. And that's why Jesus is telling me to tell you right now today that you need to keep going. Because right now, God is about to cry out your blessing. He's about to cry out your breakthrough. He's about to cry out your double portion. He's about to cry out your more than enough. He's about to cry out your harvest right now. He's about to cry out your resources, your, 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 your hookup right now. Because you are up next for your blessing. You're up next for your breakthrough. You're up next for your double portion. You're up next for your more than enough. That's why God is telling you right now today, keep going. Don't you dare stop. Don't worry about the haters. Don't worry about the naysayers. Don't worry about what you see right now with your physical eyes. I need you to focus with me with your spiritual eyes right now because I need you to keep going because I'm about to give birth to your blessing. And that's why you are going through the pains that you are going through. That's the only way when a woman knows it's time for her to deliver her baby because the pain is sharpens Each and every second, each and every minute, the pain that you are feeling right now in your finances, is letting you know that you were up next for a double portion. The pain that you are feeling right now today in your marriage, that let me know that your marriage is restored. It is healed. It is better. Ask Job. If you turn your Bible to Job 42 verse 10, after Job went through all that hell and went through all that sacrifice, even his wife didn't want to have sex with him no more. At the, jo at the end of Job, the same wife who turned his back on her, but the same wife was loving Job again. The same wife got frisked with Job again. How I know? Because they lost 10 kids and they're also getting 10 kids right back. So that let me know that devil had to play role in it, but God was controlling the devil, how he was rolling and how he was controlling that marriage. God was controlling the whole show by himself. He was controlling it. He was in charge. He knew what was going on. He knew what to do. So don't think like God is allowing the enemy just to mess with you. God said, I want you to turn him. I want you to mess with him. God has a way to tell the devil, see, you know what? I need you to turn the heat up a little bit. Then I need you to turn it down. But then I need you to turn up even more. But the whole time, guess who's controlling the thermostat? It's Jesus. Guess who's controlling the background? It's Jesus. Guess who's controlling the scene? It's Jesus. He's controlling everything right now, my brothers. He's controlling everything right now, my sisters. That's why he said, keep going. You are too close. You have came too far right now to be whining. You have came too far to say, I'm, I'm quitting. You have came too far to say, oh, I can't take it no more. No, nah, you don't need to be doing that right now today. You need to keep going because the victory is already yours. I'm going to say that again. I say victory is already yours. You need to get ready to receive it, my brothers. You need to get ready to receive it, my sisters, because God is about to show up. He's about to turn it out right now in your life. He's about to do a new thing in your finances. He's about to do a new thing in your help. Oh, help me, Lord. He's about to do a new thing in your marriage, in your business, in your ministry. That's why he is telling me to tell you right now today. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. I don't know who this word for right now. I don't know who this message for right now. But God said, keep 
going right now. He noticed the attacks that's been going on in your finances, but God said, I allowed that attack to go on your finances. He said, I noticed that the attacks that's been going on in your ministry. He said, but I allowed that attack to go on in your ministry. I allowed that attack to go on in your business. I allowed that attack to go on with your child. I allowed that attack to go on your home because I'm controlling everything, but I need you to focus more on me and quit focus more on the attack. I need you to focus more on me and quit focus on your husband. I need you to focus more on me and not your wife. I need you to focus more on me and not your business. I need you to focus more on me and not the ministry. I need you to focus more on me and not the haters and not the doubters and not the naysayers. I need you to focus more on me because you are getting close and I'm about to give birth. I'm about to give birth. And he ain't talking about no little puppy birth neither. He talking about an elephant birth. And the elephant birth where tons and when that birth comes the whole world and the whole heavens and earth is going to shake you're going to know that god has blessed somebody with something you didn't got to post it on facebook facebook gonna post it you ain't got to post it on instagram instagram gonna post it you ain't got to post it on periscope periscope gonna post it you ain't got to post it on snapchat snapchat is gonna post it god said get ready I'm about to give birth. You're about to deliver the biggest baby it is in the whole world, whole universe. But God said you need to keep going right now. You have came too far. You are too deep. You are too deep in right now. You are too far in right now. I don't know who this is for right for now. But somebody need to open their mouth and give God some thanks right now. You need to open up your mouth and give God some praise right now. Say, God, you know what kind of situation I'm in right now. You know what I'm up against right now. Yes, my husband is tripping right now. Yes, my wife she's not sleeping with me right now yes the enemy is putting sexual thoughts in my head trying to make me cheat on my husband trying to make me cheat on my wife but i have came too far i have came too far i ain't giving up now and i ain't about to turn loose right now i ain't about to i ain't about to throw in the towel right now i'm gonna keep going father god i'm gonna keep pushing i'm gonna keep fighting i'm gonna keep trusting i'm gonna keep hoping each and every day that you gave me life that you gave me breath god because i know at the end of the day i know that you're controlling things i know that you are watching over me i know that you are protecting me and I know that you're controlling things behind the scenes so Father God even though I don't see things happening I'm still trusting you even though that my situation and my circumstances is still looking the same I am still got my faith and my hope in you God because I have came too far just to drop the ball now I have came too far now for me not to throw my rock I have came too far right now to say I have the victory because I am trusting you Jesus and I know that you better give birth to my blessing you better give birth to my breakthrough. You better give birth to my marriage. You better give birth to my blessing. You better give birth to my business. A uh, birth to my ministry. Birth to my child. You better give birth to my health. You better give birth to my finances. You better give birth to things I ain't even ask for or pray for. That's what God is saying. Keep going. If you know how close you are, if you only realize how close you are today, my brother, my sister, you won't even be complaining right now. You won't even question God right now. That's why he gave me this word and tell me, to tell me to tell you, keep going. But you just stop right now. You, you ain't way too deep. You have came too far right now today. Be worried about that. The enemy will not be attacking you the way it's attacking you if you weren't that close to a blessing. This is your due season and this is your year when God is going to say, you know what? Now I can hand the keys to you right now today. I finna hang your blessing right now. I finna hang your breakthrough right now today. Look at the change that you about to send your husband. Look at the change that you about to send your wife. Look at the change that you about to see in your child's life. Look at the change that you about to see in this ministry. Look at the change. God said, keep going. Because right now, God, God is in a lot of pain. Your blessing been waiting in that waiting room for a long time. Your breakthrough been waiting. And they're waiting in that waiting room for a long time. Your double portion been waiting in that waiting room for a long time. Your overflow been waiting in that waiting room for a long time. Your wife has been waiting for a change in that waiting room for a long time. Your husband has been waiting for a change in that waiting room for a long time. Even your business deal, even your ministry deal, even your child life, 
everything that you've been going through, every pain, every affliction has been waiting in that weight room and God has sat back. He has been quiet. He said, now I'm going to cry out and I can't lose my breath no more. I am wheezing behind this. I am having an asthma attack behind this. He said, I can't hold it too much because the pain is too variable for me. As I know how I know the pain is too variable for Jesus because Jesus is inside of you so he know the same pain that you are going through. He is going through the same type of pain. He said, the pain right now is too, too bearable for me. He said, now I'm ready to crowd. Now I'm ready to bless you. Where Now I'm ready to do some new things in your life because you have kept my word. You have kept my promise. You've been faithful and you've been obedient and you kept going on no matter what, how the enemy was attacking you. You didn't give up. You didn't stop. So God said, now I must do my part and come correct and bless you what you've been wanting me for. Did he do it for Job? Did he do it for Job? If he did it for Job, he's going to do it for you. At a certain point, Job had to keep going. He can't focus what his wife was not doing. He can't focus how people walked out his life. He can't focus how the enemy was attacking him. He can't focus on that. At that point, at this point in his life, Job was too far deep in the game. The only thing that Job could do was keep going. And he kept going. And at the end of the story, what did God do? Now, this is the, this is the home run. What did God do for Job? God blessed Job with twice as much as he had in the first time. God is telling me to tell you the same thing. He's going to bless you with twice as much that you even had before. That's why he's telling me to tell you, keep going. You have twice as much. It's already there. You have your name on it. You have twice as much that already have your name on it. You have twice as much that already have your name on it. And I believe it right now. I declare it right now. I decree it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus that you're going to see it this year, this season, in the year 2019. You're going to see it. You're twice as much. He said, keep going. And continue to put your faith and your trust and hope in Jesus. Keep going. Don't you dare stop. Jesus right now is about to cry out. And he's about to bless you. I believe it right now. Do you believe it right now? Do you receive it right now? And if you do, give God some thanks for it right now. And give God some praise, glory, hallelujah. We're going to keep going, God. And we're going to continue to fight. And we're going to continue to put our faith and our trust and hope in you. This minister LT. I hope that this word and I hope that this message right now has given somebody some type of motivation, has given somebody some type of encouragement right now today because you know that the enemy has been attacking you. You know that the enemy has been using your husband towards you and you know that the enemy has been using your wife towards you and you wonder why what was going on. It is God allowed the enemy to do that. God had a major role in that. He had a major role in that. But at the end of the day, God was controlling the temperature. He was controlling the the, um, the thermostat. He allowed the devil to do that. That's why your husband tripping. That's why your wife tripping. That's why your that's why your children tripping. That's why the enemy is putting those sexual thoughts in your head right now. He already done peeped into your future. He know how close you are. If you wasn't that close, he would not be attacking you. He's not going to attack or put nothing in your head if you wasn't that close. You too close. That's why God said keep going. Because he's going to bless you with twice as much as you even have you ever had before in your life. Get ready to receive your twice as much. That's the whole text of the story. Amen. Amen. He please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. I was praying this simple little prayer that God is already working everything got in our life right now today. And if you ever need to get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep him first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Continue to put your faith and trust and hope in God. And always continue to pray. Never give up. And know for a fact, you better receive your double portion. Amen.